Hi, uh, today we will be dealing with object oriented programming. Uh, so, uh, our session will involve uh, an overview of uh, procedure oriented programming uh, versus object oriented programming. That's uh, our topic for the day. Uh, so, we will be taking care of uh, object oriented programming definition, basic concept of object oriented programming, and benefits of object oriented programming. Uh, first, uh, have, we will have a look at procedure-oriented programming. Uh, the, in procedure-oriented programming, the main focus is on functions. Uh, the procedure-oriented programming basically uh, consists of writing a list of instructions for the computer to follow and organizing these instructions into groups known as functions. So basically we will have a set of code which will be executed one by one in a uh, sequential order and in case of uh, we, uh, clustering of uh, codes we use functions in which also we will be having uh, uh, we will be having functions for repeated set of code. The approach, uh, the approach does not model real world problems. This is because functions are action oriented and do not really correspond to the elements of the problem. So basically, uh, what we are looking at is uh, basically what we are looking at is you know how to uh, handle a real world problem. So that's why we move from procedure oriented programming to an object oriented programming, which can deal with uh, you know uh, actual objects or real world scenarios. Uh, the main problem in uh, procedure oriented programming is like data move openly around the system from function to function. So we don't have uh, a control over the uh, data uh, which is actually in a global scope which uh, cannot be had in you know, any kind of functions or uh, other uh, user activities can uh, cause uh, data to be collected uh, and issues like that. And functions transform data from one form to another. Uh, that's what I've been uh, telling you. Like the different functions can uh, have easy access to data, and now in some cases, uh, this can lead to you know issues which uh, we don't predict. Uh, so then we will move to object-oriented programming. OOP treats data as a critical element in the programming uh, program development. So it is more focused on data rather than you know, uh, the procedure or the code. Uh, it ties data more closely to functions that operates on it and protects from outside modifications. So uh, we have a set of data and uh, we have a particular set of functions which will be dealing with this particular data. We don't allow any other functions or uh, any other section of the code to interact with this data. That's basically encapsulated. And we will come to that later. The data of an object can be accessed only by the functions associated with that uh, object. Uh, functions of one object can access the functions of another object. So uh, basically, it's an interaction. We create objects uh, with you know uh, each each object will have its particular data and its on particular methods, which will be used to handle this uh, or uh, manipulate this data. Uh, and we can these objects interact they interact with each other. That's the basic concept. So, uh, as I said, uh, programs are divided into objects. Data structures are designed such that they characterize the objects. Functions that operate on the data of an object are tied together in the data structure. So, uh, as I said, uh, each uh, set of data has its own methods which are tied together into one object. Data is hidden and cannot be accessed by external functions. In uh, an object, uh, we can set uh, different access levels for uh, the variables and we don't give uh, you know, uh, sensitive data to outside objects. Uh, we hide it inside one uh, object and only the objects and methods of that particular object can access this data. So, uh, 
in uh, object oriented programming uh, objects may communicate with each other through functions so each uh, objects communicate with another object using their particular methods new data and functions can be added easily whenever necessary so these are the sections that we deal with inside uh, when we call a uh, basic uh, object oriented programming. We have objects or instances of a class and data abstraction and encapsulation. Those are uh, things that we deal with in uh, object oriented programming. Uh, the basic concepts that we need to uh, take care of, uh, you know, we need to know when we are doing a programming object oriented method are inheritance, abstract classes and interfaces, and polymorphism. We will come to that one by one. Objects. What are objects? Objects are the basic runtime entities in an object oriented system. They may represent a person, a place, a bank, a code, etc. Objects take up space in the memory and have an associated address like a structure you see. Uh, we will uh, look at classes and then go in detail about the objects. The classes are user-defined data types, uh, like int or character or string, which are uh, generic data types in any language. We can define a particular data type using classes. That's what known as user-defined. That's why they are called user-defined data types. The entire set of data and code of an object can be made a user-defined data type with the help of a class. Objects are variables of type class. Uh, once a class has been defined, we can create any number of objects belonging to that class. Each object associated with the data of type class with which they are created. So basically, uh, a class is a set of uh, a group of data, and uh, as I said, it's a, uh, a list of variables and a list of methods. So. This is actually one kind of data type. So uh, when we say a data type, it will uh, it will have instances, and uh, those instances can store data, and they have a definite property. Uh, so those instances of a class, which the uh, when we call an object and uh, of uh, a class or a data type, those objects will be handled only through methods of that data type or that class. Now, uh, as uh, we will be discussing uh, abstraction and encapsulation now, the wrapping up of data and functions into a single unit is known as encapsulation. What we do actually, actually with the class is, uh, as we have been telling from the start, uh, it's basically the concept is to wrap uh, a particular list of data and uh, the methods that deal with this data into one particular entity or one data type. That is called as encapsulation. So uh, that's what is in, uh, referred to as encapsulation. The data is not accessible to the outside world and only those functions which are wrapped in the class can access it. These functions provide the interface between the object's data and the program. This is insulation of the data from direct access by the program is called data hiding or information hiding. So basically we have something called as uh, data hiding or information hiding that can be uh, done through classes. So when we have a private, uh, we will come to that in, in some time called as private, public and public. When we, uh, most of us know what basic concept is. Uh, so when we have a data as private, it cannot be accessed by any uh, other function or uh, call from outside of an object. This can be handled only through the method. So that way we are actually uh, handling it inside the object itself and we are not revealing to the outside world. That is known as data hiding or information hiding.